Hello, Michelle. What's shaking? Hey, Lindsay. Not too much. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm excited to be recording with you. What are we talking about today? I saw our notes a little bit. Yes. What's going on? Oh, well, today we're going to talk about a fun expression. Maybe it's a proverb. Maybe it's a little bit of both. Yep. Um, it, it is desperate times call for desperate measures. Oh my gosh. I wonder this where this is going to go today. Yeah, I'm definitely here. I wonder what direction we're going to take this episode in. We'll find out, right? <laughs> we um, will find out. We will find out. Um, yeah. Yes. So w- would you say that people use this? Yeah, I would say so for sure during desperate times. Right. And that could mean like on the macro level economies or scenarios like wars even, or in the micro level, just in your own situation, even making fun of yourself in a sarcastic way. So we're going to get into all this stuff today, Michelle, before we talk about it though, um, I want to make sure our listeners go over and get their fluency score because we are all working for that 99% fluency level, but we're all starting in a different place, right? Right. And we want to know where that place is yeah, because that'll help us get to the next place. Yeah. And I know from experience, how frustrating it can be when you feel like you're not quite at that right level. You're not sure where to start. Yeah. That's, that's confusing and frustrating when starting to learn a language. So guys, we want to help you with that. Exactly. So go over to all earsenglish.com slash fluency score to start your simple quiz guys. It just takes a couple of minutes and you'll get your score 50%. or 80% fluency. So Michelle, coming back to desperate times call for desperate measures. What the heck is this one all about? (laughs) Well, it's kind of funny because like you said, it can be kind of in a more serious situation Mm -hmm. or it can be a little less serious. Maybe you're making fun of yourself. It can be formal, informal. It's very dynamic. Um, but, but what does it mean? I mean, what does Hmm. that mean? (laughs) Yeah, it's really, it's really, this is going to be interesting because this, this is multifaceted, this phrase, right? I think it means when you're in a a tough situation, you have to take extreme action. You have to do something extreme to solve the extreme problem. Right. You have to desperate times, right? Like Mm -hmm. a difficult time. Call for, call for so that it basically to need right require desperate measure yeah require desperate measures to so like to do something that's big right to try yes. and fix something make something exactly. better exactly so that is the general idea so now you guys can start to see how this could apply to different situations let's start with the big stuff michelle um obviously we've just had this global health crisis right not to bring it up all the time but i mean uh. that, it's but it but it i mean it's true like i mean that's what like thinking of all the things people did to try and stay safe mm-hmm. right Th- things that were uh I mean, desperate measures, basically, right? We were in, a, you know, it was a crisis and doing something to try and fix it. But there, you couldn't just really do l- little things to fix it. It was a big deal. So or, yeah, and 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 yeah. just to, to zoom in on that one situation, you could use this in a lot of scenarios within that situation. Right. Even people that went and stocked up on toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I didn't do it. Right. Um, but I know people that did and, you know, desperate, t- they probably in their mind were saying desperate times call for def- desperate measures, even though there actually was no, no shortage. There was no, like right now we're about to have a shortage on avocados. Um, I just read about that Wait, coming out really? of Mexico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh huh. No. Yeah, that is a true sh- shortage. Like they're not exporting them anymore. Um, but there was not a shortage of toilet paper. I think people thought they were in desperate times for toilet mm-hmm. paper, but it was just more of a projection of the entire situation. That's interesting. So that could work too, right, Michelle? Yeah, absolutely. So many different uh, compartments of that <laughs> could mm-hmm. you could yeah. use this expression. Yeah. Um, also, maybe something like uh, the housing market, right? Somebody yeah. might end up in this current market paying like so much more money than they anticipated. And they that's might me. say, well, desperate times. <laughs> yeah, that's you. That's me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So way, would you say of. like maybe in your head, you could have been like, well, desperate times. And or, yeah. or sometimes people might just say desperate times. And that's one of those mm. situations where sometimes we talk about yes. people know it so well that you can just say the beginning and cut off the end. Yeah. And that's probably how a lot of natives would, because they're too lazy, honestly, to finish it. Right. So we've Mm. done a few other phrases (laughs) that would, that, that would, I mean, it's tricky with the housing situation right now because yeah, housing prices are through the roof and they honestly don't make a ton of sense 
But then you look at the interest rates and as of, you know, the yeah, first right, quarter right, Q1 right. 2022, the interest rates were so low. So it's like, okay, what happens if we wait, then we're paying still sky high prices and then interest rates on top of that being higher. So that's a tricky scenario, right? It's a yeah. very weird housing market right now. Yeah. Very weird. Also like uh, the uh, buying a car. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. Have you bought a car in this, in this crazy? I haven't, but I need to. And like, I would like to hold off, but apparently this could be a long time. I know. So it's just one of those things where you're like, like I, I, yeah, it's really interesting to see all the effects of the, of the, this health crisis that we've had just to see all the ripple effects and what is still not solved. You know, it's right, bizarre. Right. That's a great word, Lindsay. What's a ripple effect? Ripple effect. Yeah. I imagine like a river, you know, with something drops in and then it causes ripples and it affects everything, even on the exterior. Right. Right, right, right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's look at less, yeah, less <laughs> dire, more situation. personal ones. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm thinking about <laughs> training a baby to sleep. Okay. So I, I don't know if you've ever heard of this, uh, like cry it out method. No. Can, tell us about that. You're, you're the one with the authority on this, <laughs> in this area. Oh gosh. I don't know. So uh, some, so it's like kind of a big, um, mm, like, uh, I'm trying to look at uh, not controversy, like a but movement like or a people, pe no, people take? are like torn, you know, like really one side or the other. Mm -hmm. Um, it's basically like when a baby is having a sleep regression, when they get to a certain age, there's um, one of the methods to help them sleep is to let them just cry. And mm. it's called the cry it out method. And there's, I, I believe there's like science behind it and things like that. But, um, and, and it's one of those things where like, I think a lot of parents say they're not going to do, um, but then they might say they're so exhausted and they might say desperate times cause call for desperate measures. And That's it's like, so example. they have to do, they have to do something extreme. And I'm trying to think if I did this with my son, I, I, I didn't really like do this, but, but Dan was like, you know, maybe we might have to. And, um, I learned some other tricks. I'm not saying that he didn't ever cry, <laughs> yeah. but, but, um, in, in, I, I was fortunate. I didn't have to do like the complete cry it out method, just okay, like a, somewhere a, in between you know, a little bit, a little bit here and there. But so, yeah, if you, if you're so sleep deprived, somebody might say, all right, let's just do it. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Yeah. And I've heard it's, it can be really difficult. You know, when you have a new baby, you know, both parents are sleep deprived. It can be really intense. So this is a good example of where this phrase makes sense on the micro level, like in your home with your right. family and friends totally makes sense. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Exactly. And then, uh, and then another one, I mean, this could be personal as well. So let's think, um, if someone has to move for a like they are having trouble mm. finding a job in their area. Lindsay, I know you said you watched this. I watched. Do you remember? The what? What was it? <laughs> this is us, the show. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Did you uh -huh. see how like one of the characters, he had to move away for his job? No, he, I, he, I, I missed that one. I feel like I've got like season five and season two and episode one of season three. You gotta of, watch it in all, you gotta watch it in order. I don't no, know what you're doing. I'm totally out of order. It's all, it's a big mess. <laughs> it's, it's not like one of those shows. It's not like a Seinfeld where you that's can just what I'm pop doing. in from that's, time. I'm doing it all wrong, Michelle. I'm doing it all wrong. Okay, so someone moved, Somebody, some, wait, which character moved out of Toby. town? Toby. Toby, well, Toby. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that. Okay. Yeah. And he's always in he's LA like a or few something. Days, a few days a week. He has okay. to do it. Also Chandler had to do that on friends, you know, so people might have to make big adjustments in their mm -hmm. jobs and their lifestyles. Uh, even with having a family, they may have to move. They may have to go out of town for a few weeks or something, you know, yes. and they might say, well, desperate times call for desperate measures, right? Because they need work. Yeah. I love that. And that, so that's about life situations. And then I want to add one more example. That's okay. kind of along the lines of self, like making self deprecation, right. Making fun of oneself. So Michelle, okay. you know, I'm, I'm a terrible cook. I'm not a cook, but let's just imagine that I was going to have a date. I invited the person over. I was going to cook for them and uh -huh. they come over and there's flour all over the kitchen. Everything's flying around. The place is a total disaster. <laughs> and I, I get to the moment where I realize this is not going to work out. And so I say <laughs> desperate times, right. Call for des desperate measures. We're going to order pizza, something like that. Mm -hmm. Right. So that would be an example of where you're poking fun at yourself. You've right. maybe you're a little in over your head. 
right, 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 right. It's, <laughs> everything is very overwhelming and extreme. Yes. And then you just get pizza and there's nothing wrong with pizza. <laughs> so. Just fine. It's just fine. <laughs> so that's fun. That's a fun example. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So guys, there are, you can use this more casually to make fun of yourself, to make fun of mm-hmm. a situation. Mm-hmm. Um, Lindsay, mm-hmm. can you think of an example in your life? Maybe where desperate times called for desperate measures. Oh my God. That's such a good question. There's so many of them, Michelle, and I'd love uh, to share them, but now I can't think of them I on know, the I spot. Know, um, <laughs> mm, I'm, I'll, I'll have to come back to you on that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But that's an example of what I could imagine myself in the kitchen would happen. <laughs> <laughs> Flour exactly. everywhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Guys. So if you want, you can look more into the origins of this expression. I read that it may have something to do with it. It, it, it might originate from a Greek expression. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure. I looked around a little bit. If you're curious to look this up, get into it, but we wanted to really give you like how it's used today, how we, how we use it in conversation. So, um, I think it's actually very versatile and Uh we're going to show you, you know, some more role plays so you can see an actual conversation. Absolutely. I mean, again, guys, we can't be sure about the history of any phrase, right? We, you know, we can tell you how we use it now. And obviously there are certain phrases that we avoid now because we know that they're, they don't have a, they have kind of an ugly past, right? But with this particular one, we really don't know, and it's not well known. So this one, we, we do, we'll say that we use this as native speakers for Uh sure. For sure. Yeah. We use this as native speakers. Yes, definitely. All right. So here we go. Uh, here we're coworkers. All right, let's do it. Here we go. Oh my gosh. I think we'll be here until 2 AM finishing this report. Oh, I know this is awful, but desperate times call for desperate measures. <laughs> so, All right. oh, just having us to work late, even something like that. Right. Oh like that's, gosh. you can say that. Sometimes when you try to do that, though, you hit a wall where you just can't think anymore at 2 a.m. And yeah. you don't get anything done. At least I don't. But I think you, Michelle, you said that you're kind of a night owl, like you work better at night. Yeah. But to actually like make myself do something that late, like sometimes I think, oh, if I can't sleep, maybe I should actually just get up and do some work, but I can't do that. Every once in a while, every once in a while, you will find me (laughs) and I'm about to go to sleep or I can't sleep and I'm planning an all ears English episode on my phone. (laughs) It does happen because sometimes I'll hear something (laughs) and then I'm like, okay, I'm just going to do this. Like, you know, (laughs) because I'm going to need it. So nice. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Sometimes, but mostly um, the, the work quality is garbage for me too, between like midnight and, you know, 5 AM or something. So, okay. Um, all right. The next one is here. We're friends and I'm in a difficult situation. Okay. I can't believe I got gum in my hair. Yeah. I honestly think you just have to cut that whole chunk out. No, I know, but desperate times call for desperate measures. So this is kind of a body thing. (laughs) Yeah. If something's in your hair or I, yeah, imagine getting something stuck somewhere you have to I mean, I guess the example that's coming to my head right now is the guy, the movie I watched a few weeks ago about the guy who had to cut off his arm because he was oh, stuck in the cave well, that's in Utah. Very different than hair, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's an example for sure. Not that funny. Um, no, but he, no. he was, he was in a cave for, I think, what would it, like if, four days or something and just stuck under a rock. Like he was lodged in, inside between the rock and the cave. And he eventually was either going to die or he had to cut off his arm. Um, so he cut off his arm. <laughs> All right. Well, here I will be cutting gum out. Of no, my hair. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, and, mm-hmm. yeah. And you also, we also have this intonation. It's kind of like desperate times call for desperate, desperate measures, measures so. right. Or desperate times, right. You could say that too. Shortening desperate it. Times. Right? right. And I think that this also kind of tries to toughen people like, yes. and realize like, Oh, not everything's pleasant. Like, all right, desperate times. We got to do it. Um, and I, I suppose that could be annoying. And if you're really like upset about something and somebody's just like, well, desperate times. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's a little bit dismissing, right. If they right. don't like, you're going to have to cut off your hair. I mean, that's, if I had to cut off my hair, that would be devastating. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know? And so if someone didn't identify with that or couldn't empathize, I wouldn't like that, you know? Yeah. Right, right, right. Um, so let's just talk about one more way that we can say that that's a little bit more informal. Okay. Um, and this expression is you got to do what you got to do. Wow. This one is so native. We've got so many weird spellings and shortenings of words. Yeah. Got yeah. Meaning what yeah, you, you. you got and guys get the transcripts, get the app for this one, go to allersenglish.com slash app. Cause you'll be able to see the transcripts right on your phone. You got to do meaning what? gotta have to. Yeah. What you got to do. So it's basically like, well, 
it's kind of like saying like tough kind of, it's like, yeah, tough. you know, mm-hmm. so it's, it's like, it can be a little bit jarring, I guess, if you hear that and yeah. you're complaining about something and somebody says something like that. So, you know, don't say it if somebody's really, really, really upset about something. Yeah. I mean, whenever I think about this phrase, desperate times, I think about like the original pioneers, you know, that, you know, moved West in the late 1800s, the mid 1800s and like how hard it must've been for them living on the plains, the winds, the disease there was, it's just like, Oh my God, what a different life. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Very different. (laughs) Um, so Lindsay, let's show how this might be used and you can use this about yourself. Okay. You know, or you can use this about other people. Like if I'm making fun of myself, all right, you got to do what you got to do, Michelle, you know, might talk to myself in that way, but here we go. Okay. Um, I really don't want to have three layovers to get to this wedding. Oh, I know it's terrible. Ugh, but you got to do what you got to (laughs) do or red eyes, taking a red eye. You got to do what you got to do. Right. That's a good example. Exactly. Um, This is great. So guys, we've shown you some really relevant ways to talk about resorting to something when you're in a tough situation, right? Michelle, what's our takeaway? Guys, these are useful. They can be used about current events that are more broad in the world. Um, Mm -hmm. They can be used about personal events. It's formal, informal, you know, desperate times call for desperate measures. You can use it to make fun of yourself. It's just very, very, very dynamic. Um, And so it's a good one. So definitely try it out. 100%. I agree, Michelle. Well, this has been fun and I'll talk to you on the next episode. Have a good one. All All right. right. You too. Bye guys. Bye. 